this is Chicho. Welcome to my channel. Now, what I want to do in this video is um, show you five books that I came across um, on my bookshelf that um, I thought were worth the read. Okay. Um, basically, what I'm doing right now is um, I'm in the process of um, putting together a short discussion, short if you can call it short, a uh, short discussion on economics, which is directly going to tie us into um, mathematics, right? Some of the stuff that we're doing regarding um, the mathematics of economics, right? And as I mentioned before in a couple of previous videos, I guess, um, that economics is directly related to politics. You can't really talk about economics without talking about politics, and you can't talk about politics without talking about economics, right? So what I do when I try to organize my books, I try to organize them uh, on my bookshelf, I try to organize them by category or by, or by author, right? And um, what I ended up doing was, uh, you know, I was looking in the economics section, some of the economics books, just for reference, for some little bit of research, and the politics stuff was there, so I started browsing the politics books. And um, I found five books that have uh, stuck with me, that I read um, over the years, that have sort of um, provided additional information to me or gave me a perspective on politics which I may not have had. Um, and I thought it'd be fun to share this, uh, share these uh, five books with you guys. Um, and what I'm going to do, in no particular order of which one's more important than the other one, I'm just going to go in the order that um, from oldest to the most recent that I've read. And um, th and the most recent, obviously, I know more, I know better. Uh, but what I'm going to do is show you um, the oldest one that sort of gave me a perspective on on politics uh, in large part and on life to a certain degree right and the book is called uh, between heaven and hell by peter uh, krift okay and i read this in the 80s i was in high school right uh, so uh, i've known politics i've been involved in politics for a long time i've followed politics for a long time um, early days in high school so this is one of the reasons i ended up reading this um, which is this the book is described as a dialogue somewhere beyond death with john f kennedy c.s lewis and aldous huxley and i've mentioned before that i've read a lot of c.s lewis right so i knew about kennedy through politics some stuff about kennedy whatever you could obtain uh not even all of it um in the 1980s regarding kennedy and what took place um with the assassination and stuff like this and I've read a lot of C.S. Lewis by that time when I picked up this book so I'd read a lot of C.S. Lewis so I knew about Kennedy I knew about C.S. Lewis and Aldous Huxley's name had blown in the wind in my direction right so I didn't know too much about Aldous Huxley um, and after reading this you know it got the juices flowing it got me thinking and um, it was a very good book uh, for the time. I haven't read it. I don't know what the dialogue was. I don't uh, You know, I don't know if I'll like it now, but it did influence me when I was in high school and the description for this is um, And I didn't know this um, It didn't really Trigger anything for me back then, but here's the so the little write-up at the back and it says on November 22nd 1963 three great men died within a few hours of each other C.S. Lewis, John F. Kennedy, and Aldous Huxley. Right. Wow. Three huge men. Right. <laughs> three, three icons, really. All three believed in different ways that death is not the end of human life. Suppose they were right, and suppose they met after death. How might the conversation go? So this is basically all three of these people. Uh, Kennedy, Lewis, and Huxley sitting down and talking to each other after they have died. And this is sort of a dialogue put together by Peter Krift. Uh, interesting at the time for me. It stayed with me. You know, it's followed me around for th 30 plus years, right? So um, it's probably overdue for a reread. Um, another book that I read, and I don't know if I read this one 
before the next one or the other one before this one but they came out around the uh, I'm gonna go by the date that they came out on uh, so the other book is Robert Anton Wilson's Wilhelm Reich in Hell okay wow what a great book and I knew about Robert Anton Wilson I've um, I've read some of his essays some of his articles and stuff like this and I've listened to a lot of his uh, lectures and discussions and conversations um, and if you don't know Robert Anton Wilson um, this might be an okay place to start I don't know um, the place that really got me hooked on Robert Anton Wilson is sort of a is it a 13 hour or a seven hour audio interview with Robert Anton Wilson and it's called uh, um, raw explain Robert Anton Wilson explains uh, everything raw show was ign ignorance I think it's a double title like um, certain things right um, and this book was fantastic really and there's actually a musical of this available online sort of along the long along the lines of um, Rocky Horror Picture Show I haven't I think I've watched the musical once all the way through but I enjoyed reading it instead of watching the musical I was being distracted by the extravaganza of it right um, and this is basically uh, sort of a play Robert Anton Wilson wrote about Wilhelm, he Wil Wilhelm Reich's persecution and if you don't know Wil Wilhelm Reich uh, it's worth looking into okay uh very much worth looking into he's one of the few people actually one of the only people that i know of and i went through and i highlighted some of the stuff in this book uh, but wilhelm reich is the only person that i know of that both nazi germany and the u.s government have burned his books right and that's a serious title to have and uh, the the u.s government basically threw him in jail for whatever reason you can look that up if you want um for basically well whatever reason you might think they threw him in jail for um what whoever you choose to believe but basically a week before he was due to be released he died of a heart attack in jail um so that really intrigued me about this book and i read this book and it's fantastic okay uh has a lot to do with um, our society persecution uh, our perspective of the powers that be and whatnot right um, so Robert Anton Wilson's uh, Wilhelm Reich in Hell and you can follow that up if you are interested because it's along the same theme is um, the third book is Gore Vidal's Perpetual War for Perpetual Peace okay this book was fantastic it uh, it revealed a lot uh, about what happened uh, in Oklahoma City with um, Timothy McVeigh and the uh, Oklahoma City bombing right a lot of stuff there's no way you would have got from mainstream media you won't even get it now from the mainstream media uh, right uh, and it's very good it does give you everything uh, that I believe it, that took place in my opinion I did a little research into this um, Oklahoma City, City bombing and Waco were two huge events in the 1990s they in large part really shaped the present day United States huge huge events uh, the Waco what happened in Waco I was in a comic book store at the time when that went down the final fire and the murder of uh, multiple people right um, and multiple families it was insane it was incredible and as you can imagine the conversation in the comic book shop when this went down was absolutely brilliant um in a in an in analytical kind of way right i stayed in the comic shop for a few hours talking with people and browsing comics and checking out the news at the time that's all we had no internet right so this is a very good book if you want to get a good feel of uh, the Oklahoma City bombing Timothy McVeigh and one of the main events that has sort of shaped the United States okay Gore Vidal's perpetual war for perpetual peace 
How We Got to Be So Hated. Okay. Very important book. Uh, should be in curriculum in schools, right? Now, another book that I read, uh, it was a gift from uh, some friends. And um, it's a tourist book, really. But it's Robert Young Pelton's The World's Most Dangerous Places. Okay. <laughs> I read most of this. Uh, it, was, it was a good read. It took me a while to read it. Uh, I would read sections and stuff like this. And it's broken down. Uh, which edition is this, actually? This is uh, the fifth edition. So I don't know when it came out. It came out in early 2000s, I believe. Um, let's see. Says, when is this? It came out in the early 2000s because this is talking about uh, it's got September 11th uh, forward in it. Okay, and the table of contents let me just read some of the stuff at uh, the table of contents, uh, just the main sections, and it's broken down like an index, right? It, all the grays are the basically different sections. Um, so it provides a list of ma maps, the author, uh, what is dangerous, what is danger, what danger awaits the weir weary traveler, making the best of nasty situations, business travelers, tourists, bribes, dangerous jobs, dangerous diseases, drugs, getting arrested, guns, intelligence, kidnapping, landmines, mercenaries, terrorism, adventure calls. So those are that's sort of the first section of the book right and then it goes to dangerous places and it covers a few different locations right um, so it gives dangerous places dangerous places short and sweet sort of a summary description and then it lists the places that they consider to be rated based on their rating system the most dangerous places in the world and this is in the early 2000s right early mid 2000s um, Afghanistan, Algeria, the Balkans, Chechnya, Colombia, Georgia, Great Lakes, uh, Burundi, Rwanda, Uganda, so Central Africa, uh, India, Iran, Iraq, Israel, Palestine, Kurdistan, Lebanon, Liberia, Nepal, North Korea, Pakistan, the Philippines, Russia, South America, Sudan, the United States of America, Yemen, Zimbabwe. Those are the most dangerous places in the world based on this book, certain locations. I didn't agree with, by the way, I didn't agree with everything that was written here, um, obviously. But I found the information informative, right? And there's a lot of stuff that I didn't know um, that had happened. And some stuff that was, in my opinion, could be uh, looked at as misinformation or disinformation. I don't know. It's up to you, however one you want to think about it. Um, a little black blood, save the world, save yourself, what the pack, index, photo credits. So, you know, it's got a little bit at the end of how to protect yourself, save the world, save yourself, and whatnot. It was a good book. Uh, informative, good, I don't want to say a little summary about what's going on in the world, but good little perspective of some of the stuff that's going on in the world okay. uh, worth having anyway I don't know what edition is in now um, the internet provides everything you need to know that's in here really now but uh, at the time it was worth having and at the time there's a lot of stuff available online as well of course uh, to a certain degree more so than now because there's less sensors um, in play um, the fifth book I want to show you is a more recent book that I read. And I read this basically when it first came out within a few months of it first coming out, I believe. Um, and it came out in uh, 2012. And it's, and you would have, if you watched my videos, you would have seen this book. We mentioned this book multiple times. And we've read a little bit about this with Joe Sacco. Uh, but Days of Destruction, Days of Revolt by Chris Hedges and Joe Sacco. And it's basically, you know text with comic pages Joe Sacco being sort of the pioneer of uh, comic book journalism 
and articles, essays written by um, Chris Hedges, where he travels around the United States and talks about basically uh, sacrifice zones. Uh, sacrifice zones being places that we've sacrificed for the economy, for our current current economic system, right? And, you know, he categorizes these. Uh, chapter one is, is Days of Theft. Uh, Pine Ridge, South Dakota. If you don't know anything about Pine Ridge, look into it. Wow, wow, wow. And it's got Days of Siege, uh, Camden, New Jersey. Chapter three is Days of Devastation, Welch, Virginia, West Virginia. Days of Slavery, um, Emma, Emma, Emma Coley, Florida, I can't pronounce the names. Days of Revolt, Liberty Square, New York City. And that was uh, Occupy Wall Street, right? Uh, during those times, and they interviewed some of the people. And uh, it's a very good book to read if you want to know what's going on presently in the United States, the present politics and geopolitics, foreign policy in the United States, and how it's played out in other parts of the world and come back uh, to roost at home, I guess, is that the saying? Uh, a very good book if you want to know the mindset, the general theme, the feel of what's going on in the streets in the United States. Uh, highly recommend it, highly recommend it. Uh, lots of information there, lots of statistics. And um, so those are the five books. And one other thing I'll mention is, as I mentioned before, I've read a lot of C.S. Lewis and I've read a lot of essays not just by cs lewis by multiple people i've read a huge amount of essays i'm, I'm a uh, i love reading essays which are basically sort of summaries of books to a certain degree if you want to think about it that's why i love watching lectures and interviews and stuff like this right um, and there's been a lot of essays that uh, have stuck with me and have influenced me and there's been a lot of books that have stuck with me and influenced me these are the five that have stayed with me this long there have been others there have been others that i wish i still had uh, right that you know throughout the years the moves they didn't make it right but let me sh let me tell you about one essay that i read by c.s lewis that uh, i read a few times in the 80s and 90s i haven't read it since the 90s early 90s um, but it stuck with me and it influenced me and i liked it a lot and it's a title of sort of a compilation of essays that uh, book they put together. And it's Fern, Seed, and Elephants by C.S. Lewis. Okay. And other essays. And this is sort of a paperback I picked up in the 80s. And uh, I think it's in the 80s. Pretty sure it's in the 80s. And it's got multiple essays on here. It's got essays on uh, membership, learning in wartime, on f forgiveness, his, um, historicism the world's last night religion and rocketry the efficiency of prayer and the last essay is fern seed and elephants and it's an address that he made i forget where he made it uh, might have been to a graduating class uh, in a certain year or something like this okay uh, so that's five books and one essay that have stuck with me that have influenced my political perspective on the world um, and I like the way they modified or they amplified, improved, uh, provided additional information to what I thought I knew or what I did know. Okay. Um, other than that, um, in the next few videos, um, we're going to talk a little bit about economics. I'm still putting this stuff together, going through my notebooks and condensing, compiling, and sort of organizing stuff that. Uh, Try to make it coherent and make it relevant to what we're going to do with uh, ASMR math, some of the mathematics stuff that we're going to do, which is going to directly follow the economic stuff, which is a short little discussion on percentages. Okay, um, that's it for now. I'll see you guys in the next video.